For me, printing in a darkroom is as good as it gets. After I graduated and lost access to my university darkroom, I stumbled upon the community darkroom locator on the back of a box of HP5. And that's what led me here. Being a community darkroom, there's always people coming in and out, picking up negatives or prints from the drying racks. It's a good way to meet new people, talk photography, and learn. One conversation in particular has stuck with me a long time. I was making a print of the first photo I had ever taken in the woods. The scene was of an old sugar maple surrounded by eastern hemlock trees, dotted with afternoon light peeking through the canopy. Someone came in and after seeing the image I'd just printed, asked me if I was ever scared while photographing in the woods, if I ever worried that I'd capture something sinister on film that wasn't there in reality. I remember thinking how strange it was that someone would associate fear with what I thought was a peaceful and serene image of some trees. I didn't know it at the time, but that conversation would shape my future as a photographer. My life is chaotic. I think that's what I like about the woods. It allows me to embrace the chaos and find beauty in the unexpected. Generally, I don't go out with any expectations or spend too much time planning specific images. <laughs> Light moves fast in the woods. One minute, a scene can appear dull and uninteresting, but can completely change with the slightest movement of the sun. It's a delicate balance. I often find myself moving slowly and unintentionally through the woods, while at the same time acting quickly and with purpose to capture an image. It's easy to feel small in these spaces, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe that's why I gravitate to medium format while shooting in the woods. The larger negative allows me to capture the grandeur of these complex figures, while also preserving the tiniest of details. And in black and white, these giants shine. I often find myself thinking back to that conversation in the darkroom all those years ago and people's general misconceptions about dangers lurking in the woods. And although misplaced, the sad truth is they're not far off. So far this season, a total of 7.5 million hectares have burned. Smoke from fires in Western Canada is covering thousands of square kilometers, stretching from north central BC all the way to the Arctic. Off the charts. That was the air quality for yesterday in Ottawa and some of these other regions. New federal data show more than 400 active fires across the country and project warm and dry conditions in June, putting land from BC all the way to Western Quebec at risk until the end of August. When the last flames were extinguished on the 2023 wildfire season in Canada, over 45 million acres, an area six times the size of Belgium, was burned. 
I think when we're faced with change on such a grand scale, it can be scary. But change is constantly happening around us. And if you want to see it, with change can also come hope. Even here, in my own woods, evidence of positive change can be found in the dense softwood forest growing up around casualties of the logging industry of the early 20th century. Or in the rock piles dotted around our sugar maples, which to most people will go unnoticed, but are in fact indications that at one point, over a hundred years ago, these woods were all cleared for farmers' fields. That is the narrative that I try to convey through my photography. That even in the darkest times, all is not lost, and positive change can begin with one simple action. Whether it's through my work itself or events I organize such as photo walks or outdoor exhibits, I hope to inspire others to get outside and enjoy the natural world and to realize that nature is not something to be feared, but to be protected. My name is Jess Hobbs, and this is my film story.